Hello everybody, uh, this is uh, Brother Luke, uh, Sin City Preacher. Uh, today I want to talk about Calvinism. Uh, I intended on uh, having a group discussion on this, uh, but unfortunately the participants for a ver variety of technical and, and uh, personal problems, uh, it didn't work out. And I, I didn't want to put this off to some point in the future because uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to be having a surgery <clears throat> pretty soon and I'll be out of commission for a while and I think this is important and needs to be uh, said right now. So I'm going to go ahead through the lesson plan that I've prepared myself and then maybe in the future uh, I can get some of these panelists together and we can discuss these points as a group. But for now let me just carry on and I want to talk about Calvinism. Now the first thing is what the question why address Calvinism uh, is this is this something that we uh, should be talking about is there a need to discuss it or is it it's just a minor thing and uh, not not even worth talking about well uh, first of all in in first John 3 2 it says that uh, you know when we see him and he uh, and as he is then we'll understand everything perfectly. But uh, until then, I don't think anybody has a 100% perfect doctrine. I know that my own experience has been that uh, over the years, uh, I, I came to some conclusions on theology, and, and then uh, numerous times, I, with further study, realized that I was wrong. And uh, I, I ended up coming to a different conclusion. Maybe you've had that same kind of experience, and as we learn more, uh, we understand that our first conclusions were wrong. So, I do think that uh, uh, if you're watching this now, you, you're probably wrong about some things too. And uh, if you open up your mind and you're willing to really listen to you know opposing sides of an argument, uh, maybe you'll come to the conclusion that uh, oh. I guess I was wrong on that, and uh, you see the light. So I'm hoping that uh, if you're a Calvinist uh, now, or if you're just even looking into Calvinism now and, and, and considering it, because and you don't have it really made up your mind, that you you will open up your mind now and consider that uh, maybe Calvinism is wrong, and uh, take a fresh look at it. Um, now, let's start off by saying that uh, there are, there are, it's very common for Calvinists to say that God hates, uh, say that it's an erroneous statement to say that God hates uh, sin but loves the sinner. I don't know how you feel about that, but for me, I think that's a true statement. I think God loves all people. But he hates the sin, and uh, thankfully, uh, the sin issue has been already paid for now. So we know that about two thousand years ago, Jesus died on a cross. He paid for all of our sins. So uh, God's not angry today. God's happy because the Son of God, Jesus Christ, paid for all the sins. So um, uh, the idea that God uh, hates the sin and the sinner. Is wrong, and the, I, even the idea that God hates the sin and loves the sinner, I think, is wrong because because the sin is not an issue to God now. It, it's it's already been settled. All sin, past, present, future, has already been forgiven because of Jesus' death on the cross for our sins. But uh, a lot of Calvinists uh, want to make the point that God doesn't love uh, sinners. In fact, God they say God doesn't love all people. Uh, he only loves a select few, called the elect. Uh, now, this is what the Apostle Paul says. Uh, God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet uh, sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5.8. Uh, I think that pr clearly proves that uh, uh, even... Uh, sinners, and of course everybody is a sinner, whether whether we're saved or not. 
we, we had sin in our nature and we had sin in our life as we actively sinned. So uh, that means that even though mankind was sinners, God demonstrated his love for us in that while mankind was still in sin, Christ was willing to die for us. So I think that, that uh, uh, the question is, does that verse not make it clear that it is sinners whom God demonstrates his love towards? God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I think that that's a proof text to show that, yeah, even as people were in sin, God still loved us. Now, uh, I've come across cases where uh, people have been uh, turned away from God because of Calvinism. Uh, it plays into the atheist hands and makes them feel like they have a, a valid excuse to reject God. So, for this reason, I, 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 it's certainly important to discuss Calvinism because uh, this is one of the reasons that people will uh, reject Christianity as foolishness and, and uh, just horrible and they they can no they could it's impossible for them to embrace Christianity because of the way the type of Christianity that Calvinism teaches so um, there's a good reason right there that we must discuss it it, uh, it, it Calvinism puts up a wall between people and they say no I wouldn't want to become a Christian it, based upon you know this uh, predestined God predestinating people to hell and there's nothing they can do about it. Um, now, I want to define briefly Arminianism and Calvinism. Uh, Arminianism, uh, free will exists, but salvation must be earned by man and could be lost. Now, Calvinism, free will does not exist, uh, salvation is imposed on a few. Works are required to prove your salvation. So, in fact, both Calvinism and Arminianism uh, both require works for salvation. But Calvinism declares that God is evil and the only sinner. So, the reason I'm making this point is that... Uh, Both sides seem to think that they, there's only two possible conclusions. A Calvinist says, if you're not Calvinist, you mu therefore must be Arminian. And the Arminian argues the opposite. If you're not Arminian, you must be Calvinist. But uh, the truth is that they are both works-based systems. The, the Arminian has to do works to get saved and stay saved. Uh, and man has free will in order to do that. And the Calvinism, man doesn't have any free will, but uh, he must have works in his life. His life must be full of works and, and uh, it, to, that demonstrates that he was truly saved. Uh, otherwise, they conclude that they were not really saved at all, that uh, they were not really one of the chosen, the elect, uh, because there's not enough works in their life to, to prove it. So you can see that... Uh, Really, in Calvinism and Arminianism, there's no difference. They're both based on a person must have works. Uh, but what really separates Calvinism from Arminianism and makes Calvinism even more heinous to me is the fact that uh, Calvinism turns God into uh, a being that is far worse than the devil, more evil than the devil, the author of sin, the, the, the one that actually commits all the sin and simply uses man as a puppet to to uh, sin. So for that reason, uh, I have a particular disdain for, for Calvinism. Uh, now, uh, similar to Calvinist, though, this, this free will, this sovereignty of God, and this is also uh, held by uh, not only Calvinists, but, but Muslims hold to this viewpoint, the great sovereignty of God, that God wills everything, and, and even many atheists 
think that, uh, you know, and uh, things are just determined. And that uh, man doesn't have any free will, he doesn't have any real thought process, it's just chemical reactions and, uh, you know, synapse responses. So really, there's no difference between Calvinists, Muslims, and atheists in that respect. Now, a lack of free will would mean that there is no just basis for condemnation. Because it would make God the author of sin rather than man. No free will would also mean no free will to sin apart from God. And that would have to mean that God is causing man to sin while condemning them for the very sin that he caused them to do. That is a gross misrepresentation of God's just character. So, uh, is Calvinism something that should be addressed? Is it something that we must talk about and actually come against? Uh, my conclusion is yes. I will have to admit that my disdain for Calvinism uh, I've had for many years, but I haven't really talked about it much until recently. And that's because uh, one of my closest friends was a, a Calvinist, and we had talked about it privately, but he finally decided to come out publicly and proclaiming Calvinism and pushing Calvinism and and uh, that's when I had to actually make a public stand against it. I was afraid that I would be guilty by association, that people would think that because he's my friend that you know I must agree with that. So I, I was forced to start talking about Calvinism, and, and, and I'm actually thankful this has happened because uh, I feel free now to address something that is really, really serious and horrible. Uh, the doctrines of Calvinism. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, uh, I'm going to make each of these videos uh, short enough. It'll probably be several video series that I'm doing on this lesson plan I prepared. So let me end this now. And that's why I think it's important to talk about Calvinism. Uh, we, we can't uh, act like uh, this is just a, a disagreement, just different of, differences of opinion, because it is teaching a false message that works are required for salvation, is teaching a false God, uh, a God that actually uh, creates sin, creates sinners, makes them commit the sin, and then holds them responsible for their sin, condemns them to hell, even though they didn't even have a free will. They had nothing to say about it. So for those reasons, I think this, this is a legitimate subject that must be discussed, must be declared heresy, and that's what I'm doing now. So uh, part two of this is, I will discuss, is Calvinism a cult? That's coming up next. Uh, bless you all, and rest in the great uh, love and mercy of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ.